Welcome back. In this video, we cover examples of taking limits, derivatives, and integrals of the parameterized vector valued functions that we discussed in the last video. And um, some good news for working with limits, derivatives, and integrals of these types of functions is that they actually work really pretty much exactly the way that you would want them to. We apply the same types of rules that we did in uh, just like standard scalar valued functions. And uh, the only added step to this is that we just have to apply it to each component. So it's really actually quite straightforward. Um, maybe just a little bit of extra work because you basically get like three problems for the price of one with these types of things. But um, since this is pretty much all there is to it, I'm just going to jump straight into some examples. So our first one here, we are going to take the limit as t approaches 3 of t plus 3, t minus 3 over t squared plus 9. Oops, that should be a minus 9. And then our final component is sine of t minus 3. So since each of this, since this can be done component-wise, Taking this limit of the whole vector is the same idea as taking the limit and applying it to each component. So I can rewrite the problem as the limit as t approaches 3 of t plus 3. And then the limit as t approaches 3 of t minus 3 divided by t squared minus 9. And then the limit as t approaches 3 of sine of t minus 3. Okay, so all we gotta do is just evaluate each one of these limits now. In this particular one, it's really quite easy. We can do direct evaluation and just plug the three in for t and we get six. This one is a little bit trickier though, because if we plug a three into the top and into the bottom, you get zero over zero. So um, I'm just gonna write that one down and we'll come back to it in just a second. And then this one, once again, we're able to do direct substitution. We plug 3 in for the t there. We get sine of 0. So then that just winds up being equal to 0. Um, so, so far, everything's working out the way that we would hope. Um, now, for this one right here, since we are able to just consider individual components, we can take this piece and just apply the standard tricks that you would have learned in uh, maybe like Calc 1 or Calc 2. And uh, what we're able to do is factor the bottom. Let me show you how that works. So we'll have uh, t minus 3 divided by t squared minus 9 is equal to the limit as t approaches 3 of t minus 3 divided by t minus 3 times t plus 3. And then because there's a t minus 3 in the top and the bottom, we cancel those out. That leaves us with 1 over t plus 3. And then at that point, we can do direct substitution. So you just get 1 over 6 meaning that our final answer here is 6, 1 over 6, 0 as the limit of this guy right here as t approaches 3. So pretty straightforward so far. Let's do an example with a derivative. Uh, let's take the derivative of um, cosine of t plus 3t squared, let's say the natural log of 2t, and then maybe t squared e to the negative 3t. Okay, so same idea. We are able to do this component-wise, which really means that we can just take this derivative and apply it to each one of these pieces individually. So I'll write that out. We have ddt of cosine of t plus 3t squared, and then ddt of the natural log of 2t, and then ddt of t squared e to the negative 3t. Oops. Okay. So this piece right here, that's just equal to negative sine t plus <clears throat> 6t. This guy right here, we're going to have to apply the chain rule with. So uh, ln of natural log 
or Helen of natural log. Uh, natural log of 2t, you take the derivative of that, and normally you'd get just 2t on the bottom, but we also have to take the derivative of the inside because of the chain rule, and that's just 2, so I'll have a 2 on top there. And then this guy right here, I have to apply the product rule with because I have t squared e to the negative 3 times t. So uh, taking the derivative of t squared, I'm going to get 2t, and then e to the negative 3t stays put, and then I have plus t squared stays put this time, and then negative 3 e to the negative 3 t, and I'm running out of space again. Okay, this is a t here. Um, I'll rewrite this so it looks a little bit tidier. So we get negative sine t plus 6 t, and then this actually simplifies down, so we'll get 1 over t for our second component, and then right here I get 2t e to the negative 3t plus, actually minus 3t squared e to the negative 3t. Close the braces. And this is the derivative of this guy up here. So all we did was take the derivative of each component there, and that's what you get. All right, um, for the last example, let's do an integral really quick. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the vector cosine 2 theta sine of theta d theta. Okay, so for this one, again, component-wise, so I'll just take each one of these, this integral and the d theta, and apply it to each one of these pieces. So this is what I get out of here, just like so. Um, so I take the integral, put it in both components, and then all I got to do is evaluate each one of these integrals. So for this first one, we're going to apply some u sub, and uh, what you wind up out of that with out of that is one half sine two theta, and then we still have to evaluate from zero to two pi. So don't forget to write that down. And then integrating sine theta gives us negative cosine theta. And once again, evaluating from 0 to 2 pi. So um, here we're going to wind up with, uh, we plug in 2 pi into sine and you get 0. Minus, plug in another 0 and you're going to get 0. And then we get negative cosine of 2 pi is going to be 1. Cosine of 0 is also equal to 1, so it looks like in this case we just wind up with 0, 0 for our final answer here. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to applying calculus to these uh, types of functions with the, the vectors here as their output. Um, next video we'll talk a little bit about how to apply the product rule and the chain rule in the derivative case just so we have a few extra tools to work with. So I'll see you then.